So God is inviting us to put our faith in him, not our circumstances, to put our faith in how, like, Lord, I know that you love me so much and you want breakthrough. Okay, Lord, now I'm, 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 I'm putting myself out there. I'm asking you to shine your spotlight on my soul. Show me any areas that I'm off kilter, but God, I want breakthrough and I'm not staying back. Because we are kings and priests, the Bible says in Rome, in Revelations 1, 6. He, he called us to be kings and priests, to rule, to decree with authority. It's a judicial term, but to minister unto the Lord, to, to have our altar repaired. Where if you haven't been reading the word, if you haven't been meditating, or maybe you have, and I'm sure most of you have, but go deeper. Holy Spirit, I, I, it's never enough. And, and listen, you can be walking, you, it's, it's however Holy Spirit shows you. You can be in work, you know, uh, I remember Kevin Zadai saying, you know, how he was a, pie, um, a flight attendant, and he said he would pray in tongues all day under his breath. He would just be, you know, praying and praying and praying. It doesn't mean you're limited to just your prayer closet, although that's a really good place to be in. But, but see, God is saying to us, I've called you to be dread champions. I've called you to be mighty, mighty people, not walking in defeat. So I said, all right, Lord, I'm not accomplishing all that I want. What do I need to do? You need to ask the Holy Spirit, what do I need to do? Are you judging? Are you, are you talking about people? Are you gossiping? Now, I'm going to tell you, that's going to hold you up. Do you have unforgiveness towards people? That'll hold you up. Do you have unforgiveness towards yourself? That'll hold you up. You know, so, I mean, listen, the devil's not creative. He pulls the same nonsense with all of us. <laughs> you know, but God's saying, listen, I want you to be this victorious, overcoming, conquering people. Do you believe that? Yeah. If you don't, then you have a problem because yeah. I can promise you won't, you won't be. And so we have to agree with the word of God. So we're going to open up our mouths with a mighty decree. Now I am really going to switch this thing around. All right. So I want to go to numbers where we're, um, in the book of numbers. Now, I don't even know where the heck I put all this stuff. Um, in the book of Numbers, oh, here it is. We see the, um, in the book of Numbers 13. Good. Okay, so for most of us, we know the story that um, Joshua asked all these the 12 leaders, he said, I want you to go, he says, pick a leader from each tribe. So we know that they were leaders, okay? And he said, and I want you to go check out the promised land. Check out what's there. And uh, so they did. And let me read to you what happened. It says here, well, no, let me tell you what happened because I didn't type it out. Um, so what happened was they all went to check out the territory, and they were so taken by the giants in the land that they came back with an evil report. Now, how many of you know that right now, even what I'm saying, we all have giants that are before us, right? right. All of us have giants. Now, either we're going to magnify the giant or we're going to magnify the great I am, yeah. that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think according to that works within us. Amen? Yeah. So, so what happened was they said, oh, my gosh, it surely is a beautiful land. It's filled with, with honey and milk and, you know, had grapes that were enormous. I mean, it was just amazing. But the giants in the land were there, and, and we're not able to take them. And so in Numbers 13, 30 through 33 here, it says, Then Caleb, Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession of it, for we will certainly conquer it. But the men who had got up with him said, We're not able to go against the people of Canaan, for they're too strong for us. So they gave the Israelites a bad report about the land which they had spied out, saying the land through which we went in spying it out is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. So there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, are part of the Nephilim, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. So we were in their sight. Now I'm going to tell you, in order for us to break through, you have to get a picture of you, inside of you, of, of how the Lord sees you. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. And I know we know this stuff, but, but a lot of times we still 
mess up with this. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. If you don't see yourself as the righteous man or woman of God, as a powerful person in the spirit of the Lord, you're going to get your behinds kicked. It's just the way it is. So the way he's saying, they saw us. You know why? Because you project out. What's your experience? And you ever be around a person that has a lot of rejection or a lot of fear? You can feel it. You can see it on them. And so they said, listen, we're like giants. I mean, we're like grasshoppers. They're going to take us out. Well, listen to the confession of their mouth. What's the confession of your mouth? Giants aren't taking me out. My circumstances that I am standing and trusting the Lord for are not taking me out because God has the final say. There's no equal to our God. And I believe it. But see, that's where, again, our heart, if your hearts are hardened, it's, you're gonna, it's gonna ricochet. Some of you could be sitting there thinking, listen to her, what is she talking about? If that's you, I'm gonna give you a spirit of smack right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, it works. The Holy Spirit saying, listen, I want you to walk in victory. I want you to be the people that are, are conquering, that are breaking through. You don't want to look like you're sucking on lemons all day and, oh, woe is me. Nothing's ever breaking through. Nothing's ever happening. That's not, that's not God. We go through stuff. Don't get me wrong. But God provides a way of escape for every situation we're in. So I just want to decree today that we are in a place and we are moving forward and crossing over to overcoming victory. For, you know, the Bible says, consider not, you know, we quote that often, the former things of old. He's saying, behold, am I not doing a new thing, right? But see, we can choose to say, yeah, but, you know, it's been happening like this forever. Honey, you got to get out of that. That is not something I'm choosing to look at. I said, Lord, you are doing a new thing. And, Lord, wherever I came into alignment with, or, or, or just with timing, I don't get it all. I just know that the Lord didn't ask me to get it all. He just wants me to trust me because his ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are above our thoughts. That's what the word says. So it means overcoming victories in number 17. And so when you think of the scripture that in Romans where it says we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthens us, conquerors is that the Greek word is Nikeo or, or like Nike, and it means one who prevails and gets victory. That's who we are. That's who God has called us to be. So um, when I was thinking about this, and actually I was, I was looking up a lot of the commentaries just on numbers, you know, God, nothing's, nothing's there for, you know, by mistake or just there. They're, the numbers carry a lot of meaning. And so in the 17th month of, of Nisan is when they were crossing over, the Israelites were crossing over to the, crossing the Red Sea onto the promised land. And I thought, man, Lord, if that isn't like us, where we're at, you have the Egyptians behind us. You have the Red Sea like, how in the world am I going to cross over? There is a sinking sea in front of me. How am I going to get crossed over? But God's saying, I'm making a way where there is no way. I am the God who is able to ex do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think according to that works within us. Do you see how our natural minds... I mean, God created us with a mind, but that's where, again, the word is spiritual and the word supersedes what we're seeing. It's like, Lord, I know what I'm seeing here and everything in the natural says your bills won't get paid. Everything in the natural says you won't get healed or, or you won't have this breakthrough. And, and Lord, the enemy is behind me, but Lord, I don't know how you're going to make a way, but you make a way where there is no way. See, that's a supernatural power of God. And listen, it doesn't just happen. It's not like you're getting your little rabbit's foot and you're holding it up. You have to become one with the word of God. Amen. The word, you have to meditate on the word. Amen. That's what he's asking us to do. God's not the problem. 